Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not if you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones are the ones that are, that you will find on page number 255. Please turn to it. Page number 255. And today's our today's our lesson number 61. Lesson number 61, page number 255. On day 1 through 60, for those of you who've been watching these videos uh, in the past, you know that on day day one through sixty we did the practice problem the exercises that they give us on page number fifty through one hundred and ten if you have not watched those videos the first sixty videos it you will find it helpful to watch those videos first before you dive into the exams because they only give you two exams so you only, you, do, you don't have a lot of material to practice on to prepare for the real thing these are the real exams but they only give you two of them so don't waste your material here uh, make sure you, for, for, for practice purposes, for exercise purposes, this is the material that you want to use on page number 50 through 110. We have solved every single one of those problems on day number one, 1 through 60. So we will begin our process now of solving the problems from exam number 1, test, test number 1 on page number 255. The very first one says, a man is putting a fence around his rectangular yard. His lot measures 13 and a half by 47 and 3 quarters. All right. So here is his, uh, here is his yard. 13 and a half by 47 and 3 quarters. So that's the fence. Uh, that's the yard he wants to fence. Uh, the fencing comes in a roll of 50 feet long. All right. So the, so the fencing comes in a roll and each roll is equal to 50 feet. Which of the following number of rolls of fencing the man will need to buy? Well, I was wrong. I thought they were going to ask us about about how about the cost of fencing, which is what they did in exercises. A couple of exercises uh, problems that we did very similar to this one, where exact same scenario, exact same setup. They give us the dimension of the area that needs to be fenced. From that, we had to figure out the perimeter, and then the question simply was: in the past, if you recall, uh, if the if the fence costs this this many dollars per yard or per foot. How much money will he save? How many mo how much money will he, he will spend putting the fence uh, together? That's not what they're asking here. The question simply is here: How many rolls will he have to buy if they come in a roll of 50 feet? You can't buy half a roll. You can't buy 10 feet. You can't buy two feet. You must buy the fence by the roll, and each roll is 50 feet. It's very simple. Look, this is 47 and a half, 47 and three quarter feet. So you're gonna have to buy one roll to do this side. You're gonna to have to buy another roll to buy this uh, to this side, and then one more one more roll, where you will do 13 and a half plus 13 and a half. 13 plus 13 is 26. 26 and half and half is 27. You will only use 27 feet out of 50 feet, and the rest is gonna to go to waste. But there is no choice. Just just the way it is. Do you understand? So it's gonna to have to buy three rolls, and three rolls will be 150 feet. As, as I said, you'll have plenty left over. But that's just the way it is. Say la vie, as we say in the desert. Number two. We have two and three, two and one third times four and four and a half. We need to multiply these mix, mixed fractions. We cannot multiply them in the state they are in right now. We have to first write them as improper fractions. So two and one third, which is same as six and a third plus one and a third. And times, so this is one quantity, times 4 and 1 half, 4 can be written as 8 over 2, because 8 halves will make 4, because 2 halves make 1, 8 halves will make 4. So 8 halves plus 1 half, so it turns out 4 and a half is same as 9 halves, and turns out that 2 and 1 third is same as 7 thirds, which makes perfect sense, because 1 is made up of 3 thirds, 3 thirds make 1, so 6 thirds will make 2, 2 and 1 third, 7 thirds. Divide top and bottom by 3. If we divide top and bottom by 3, we can cancel out this 3, and the 9 will become 3. 
and that's about all we can do here. There is not much. There is not much we can do. Uh, there is not more we can. Not much we can do more here, because there is no. There are, there are no common factors left in any of these numbers. So we have seven times three, which is twenty-one, over two, which can be written as twenty over two plus one over two, and of course twenty over two is ten. So the answer is ten and a half. The final answer is ten and a half. The product of two and a third and four and a half. It turns out to be is ten and a half. Let's do number three. Again, one more time, I'm reminding you here, I'll probably do this several times. I'm reminding you that I'm assuming that you have watched all the videos before, one through six, one through 60, because that's all they're looking here. All the concepts that we learned before, uh, that's the, the, we're going through those concepts here in, in the exam. For example, the next problem that we do there, next problem that we're about to do, we'll have to convert the Roman numeral that they give us into Arabic number. And the number that they give us is this. M D C C C L I V. I need the room. That's it, we're done with this part. I'm gonna get out of your way for a second in case you need an unobstructed view. Well, like that's it, we need the room. M, D, C, 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 L, I, and V. If you recall, we learned how to convert Roman numerals into Arabic numbers and Arabic numbers into Roman numerals. We spent two days uh, on, that on that subject, and you will find that information on day number 35 and 36 in, in the event that you have not watched those videos. Or perhaps you have and you want to uh, uh, rewatch them because uh, you, it's not fresh in your mind. But anyway, on 35 and 36, we learn all of these concepts, and we also learn on 35 and 36, on day number 35 and 36, that Roman numerals, Roman numerals are additives. Uh, Roman numerals are additive. It simply means that we just keep on adding. Do you understand? Romans had no way of writing seven. The only way they knew of writing seven was five plus one plus one. That's the only way they knew of writing a seven. Eight would be five plus one plus one plus one. And how did they write nine? They wrote nine as one less than ten. When a low, lower number appears to the left of the higher number, when a lower number appears to the left of the higher number, you subtract the lower number from the higher number. So this is how they wrote their nine. This is the only way they knew, they knew how to write uh, nine. How did they write twenty? Well, the only way they knew of writing twenty is ten and ten until the Arabs came along and they taught them how to write the numbers in the Arabic way, which is more efficient obviously, far more efficient. What are these symbols? Uh, what, what, so that's what it is, it's additive. And all we have to, know, all we have to do now is to recall, recall what, these, what these symbols represent and just simply keep writing the translation of it and just keep adding them. They are additive. We just keep them add, adding them. For example, M we know represents 1000. What does D represent? D, if you recall, we had a discussion about it. The way the Roman referred to 500 is, well of course this is not a Roman term, but anyway this is where it comes from, demi meal. Demi means half. And that's how they would say 500. They would say 500, they would, uh, they would refer to 500 as half a thousand. Hence the letter D. D stands for 500. And then we have 100 and 100 and 100. 100 and 100 and 100 is 300. We have a 50. L is the only one that is a tricky one, you just have to memorize it. All the rest are easy. We are, we are used to seeing C, we are used to seeing v, letter V and I and so forth. D, I just told you how to remember it. D is very easy. Just think of demi. Demi means half, half a thousand. And M is thousand. M is thousand because, well, right here, mil means one thousand. In French, mil is one thousand. Uh, and, and, and of course, French word comes from, that is the root of it. And mil does not mean one million. Uh, so where were we? So now we have to do I and a V which is just 4 because it's 1 minus 5 or rather 1 minus 5 that's right this is this is rather 5 minus 1 not 1 minus 5 and that's your 4 that's it we're done so 1500 and 300 is 1854 that's all that's all there is I will see you tomorrow
where we'll continue our journey, okay? On four and five. Bye now.